everybody, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Here we are again. <laughs> we always seem to meet here in the studio, don't we? Anyway, uh, this is where it happens, isn't it? Today is one of those days, you know, it's kind of like outside, it's like been raining all day, it's dull, and you know, you don't feel very, I don't feel very kind of motivated, particularly. <laughs> Nevertheless, I've got to pack a kiln. Um, I've got to get some things through the kiln. So, I, at the present moment, I am here dusting and glazing off. Very important to dust your work. Um, I usually use a small brush, which I've got somewhere here. Now some people, some people want to dust their work, they go to all lengths to get the dust off their bisque ware. They, they, some people want to put it, have a compressed air outlet and um, spray the, um, not spray, but you know, um, blow compressed air all over, the, all over it to get you know, or maybe they, you've got a booth. Well, I, I've never had a, a booth and I've never had a compressed air gun. And I just very simply just take a brush, okay, and just go around like that, okay, and just blow it out, preferably away from you, so you're not inhaling the dust. All right, and that's about it. If, if there are any, sometimes you find with bisque wear, there are some little so bits of clay that seem to stick there. In which case, it's always a good idea when you are um, when you're doing this to have a uh, a knife handy, and then you can just give it the odd little, you know, get rid of any roughness. Okay. Actually, what I'm doing at the moment is you remember these little um, colanders that we made, these small, small colanders um, with the holes. And I want to, to <laughs> of course, uh, normally my pots don't have holes in them. But of course this has got holes drilled through it, so it's not a case of being able to pour the glaze in uh, and do my usual trick, you know, by moving it around like this, like that, and then, and then pouring it out uh, because I've got the holes in. So anyway, I was just trying to think of a way because what I really would like is to have the outside of this pot not glazed. In other words, just the bare clay, maybe sprayed with a little wood ash and on the inside have a nice glaze on the inside. So you've got a bit of contrast between the inside being glazed and the outside not being glazed. It's quite nice that, to have a bit of contrast sometimes. Um, and anyway, then I, then I had a thought about how I was going to do it. <laughs> so, I'll show you how I'm going to do it. <laughs> how I'm going to, at least I'm going to try, I may, I may, I may not succeed. Um, so I'll just bring the camera down here, just on the table. So there, there we are. It's a little bit towards the end of the day, and the light is there's always with this camera is a little bit of a you know, to get enough light there. It's a bit of a problem sometimes. Okay, so what I what I've done is I've done that one. My idea, my idea is so I'm centering these up on the on the banding wheel here and uh, I've got some wax here ordinary um, let's see ceramic ceramic wax for, cera for painting on ceramics it's a cold wax you know so what we're going to do is um, I'm just going to with my brush, put some wax here along the top edge, all right, 
like that. And, and that's going to be it. That's all I'm going to do right now. Okay, so that's that. So next one. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Tap centre mark. Of course, this one's not so easy to tap centre because it's got this handle sticking out the side here, which does tend to get in the way, but um, nevertheless, we're not daunted, are we? Because we've been practising, <laughs> as I know you have. That's it. Okay, so we're just banding like a, a half down, down to about a half inch. So there we go. Tap center him. Oops, not quite in the center. And that's it. So you need a little bit of a steady hand here just to get that like nice steady line all the way around. And I've got one more. Put him on. La, la, la. Now this wax I've actually diluted down with a little water. It, it tends to behave a little better if it's diluted a little bit, not straight out of the bottle. Neat. So it's probably diluted down, you know, sort of 40% water. Um, so, I hope my hat is not in the way. Ooh. Maybe my hat was in the way before, I don't know. Hope not. Okay, so, um, hope you can see that there, just that little wax waxed area on the top. Okay, so let's move the camera over here. I'm going to show you how I'm going to attempt to, attempt to do this. Oh, gosh, it looks so dark in the picture there really annoys me. Um, let's see if I can just bring some other light to bear here. Need another bulb. I'll stick that one on. So here, this is a Sullivan glaze here, actually. So, let's see if we're in the picture there. God, look at it, it's so dark. It's, it's not dark in here at all. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten lights on in here, would you believe? Look at them all up there, you see, they're all, they're all on. <laughs> okay, so, um, so how, how am I going to go about glazing this colander? So what I thought was actually what I thought was I'm going to need a banding wheel. couple of strips of wood I can find. Let's have a look. Yep. These will do. So I'm going to put a couple of strips of wood here, over there like that. And then that's going to go there. You see? I'm going to take the... Okay, now before I do this, I'm going to clean the banding wheel, alright? Make sure it's nice and clean because glaze is going to run over it. Okay, I need to get some glaze. 
So it's going to go there like that. Right. I just want to make sure that we've got light here. Let's have a look. Can we see that? Okay, so we've got the bucket of glaze, the wooden strips, the banding wheel on top, and then the pot on top of that. So, how are we now going to... So... Felt a bit clumsy doing that, I have to admit. <laughs> but now you'll see that the glaze has gone underneath. Well, of course, that is now going to have to be just wiped off. It's always best to do this. Excuse me, hang on. I need some water. So it's important to clean this off well here underneath and if there are any holes to um, poke them through in this plate in this case it's gone through completely all right and there it is it's yeah, it's a bit of work I know but now I've got all this glaze on here, you see, so I'm just going to pour that back down there like that. Let's try one more quickly. I'm, um, yeah, I'm feeling rather, I'm feeling rather like, you know, fingers and thumbs doing this in front of you, rather. Um, because it's not something I've... I've uh, done before, so it's not, I haven't thought it out that well. So I'll probably refine, refine this trick. <laughs> so, so we've got to, the, the trick is to pour it just where you put the wax, you see. And then it runs down, but it gives. The wax gives it a clean line, which is what you want. So, quickly lift that off, give it a shake. Get my sponge. Always best to clean these kind of things off before before the glaze has a chance to to dry. You want to wipe it. Always best to clean off your your mistakes as soon as you make them with with glaze. You know. does involve a little bit of patience, a bit of work here, just to get this 
looking nice. And there we have it, another one. So, just tip that back in. And ready for the next one. Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the boy. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. Let's see. So, I hope you can see that that is actually glazed very satisfactorily, despite the fact that we've got holes in it that the, um, the waxing idea is actually successful and works very well. Now the outside I can put wood ash on. Um, so there we are. You know, it's the, the thing is, making pots is one thing, but when we actually come to glaze pots, it's never so straightforward, is it? There's, sometimes there's a hitch or you know um, it's that you have to sometimes think through the process how you're going to do that and um, that's what I did with this I thought it through and I thought yeah if I put wax and then I pour onto the wax just on the inside edge the wax will create a sharp nice clearly defined line the glaze will all flow down through, out through the holes, and if I keep it rotating as I'm pouring, and keep a steady hand, <laughs> it's not always so easy, is it, to keep a steady hand? Sometimes we get, you know, jiggling around, and then we end up with more cleaning off, don't we? <laughs> Never mind. Um, yeah, I'm happy with those that we we had success, and. Um, I'm satisfied because it was a process I thought through first in my head and then I did it and it worked and that always gives you satisfaction, doesn't it? I find it anyway. So, yeah. Okay folks, well, from, from rainy Williamsburg, Pennsylvania, Simon Leach saying, keep practicing. Please visit our website, simonleachpottery.com. Bye-bye. Dee 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 dee.